If you're interested in getting the most out of your Sony a7S Mark III or FX3, this is the video for you. I'm gonna be talking about the most important question that everybody has that's getting into a Sony system, which is how to shoot S-Log3, how to monitor, expose, all of that stuff using Phantom LUTs, which are extremely popular right now, and I love them. With this workflow, you can get a very similar picture to an RE camera in this little body. So let's talk about that today. Now, my best video in a while was my FX6 Phantom Lutz video. I made this video because I had the issue of not understanding how to shoot and expose S-Log3, as well as how to use Cine EI mode in the FX6. Now, I assume since this is a really popular camera, a lot of people would be having the same issue. The original intention of that video was to help people with a similar problem as me, and I thought if I had that in the title, it would help other people as well. So today, I bought one of these partially to make YouTube videos with it, but mostly for a B camera for my FX6. And I'm actually extremely blown away with how good this camera is and how easy it is to use. I picked it up, I went and changed the custom button settings and it was almost exactly the same as when I was using my A7R Mark III. Now there's a lot of improvements obviously, but if you've used a Sony mirrorless camera before, it's easy to pick up and learn. Now I use phantom LUTs for monitoring and then actually grading my footage. I don't really do too much on top of what the phantom LUT offers me for my production workflow. One of the biggest issues people had with my video of the FX6 in phantom LUTs is that in the A7S Mark III, you can't actually upload LUTs. Now I understand this, but there's a really easy fix to the issue. So we're gonna be putting our camera into PP8. You could leave all of those settings the same, S-Log3, S-Gamut3.cine, that is what you wanna be filming in. now. People are gonna say, well, how do I expose this? It looks like trash, and it does. It looks really bad straight out of camera. It's gonna look washed out, unsaturated, and just overall bad. S-Log3 is extremely hard for me anyways to expose while looking at it like without a, a LUT or monitoring LUT or something like that. It's hard to tell your white balance. A lot of people say to overexpose S-Log3. Now, I don't think that is necessary, not with the LUTs that we're gonna use and the technique that we're gonna use. Expose it normally. Now, how do we do that? We wanna turn gamma display assist on. Now, this has been in a lot of Sony cameras and it just basically helps bring S-Log3, S-Log2, whatever you're shooting in, to life. And it's super easy. I've set it up on a custom button, so I just hit that for when I'm shooting video and I can hit it again for when I'm shooting photos to get out of the mode. This is all you need to do and then in the camera, the LCD screen, you can monitor S-Log3 like it was Rec. 709. Simple as that you are not baking in the Gamma Display Assist Rec. 709 LUT into the actual footage that you're recording. It's just basically a monitoring LUT for your camera. When you have that footage, then we can grade S-Log3 with the LUTs in post. The reason that I love Phantom LUTs so much is because obviously they look incredible, but they make my workflow a lot easier. So previously I would use a monitoring LUT to monitor the footage from S-Log3, and then I would grade it myself. And I think I'm okay at color grading, but I'm definitely not as good as Joel and Phantom LUTs are a lot better. So what I do is I just take whatever LUT, whatever look I'm going for, and put that on a adjustment layer in Premiere Pro. It's as easy as that. From there, I'm gonna adjust the exposure if I under or overexposed a little bit, and I might do some minor tweaks, add a bit more contrast. It really depends on the look I'm going for, but that's why it's so easy. One big adjustment layer above all the clips, and it's easier than when I was shooting on my A7R Mark III using Cine 4 because I would, I would color grade all that individually too, which just doesn't really work the same way as this. This works amazingly, so I highly recommend it. We wanna use S-Log3 because it's gonna offer us the most dynamic range out of the camera, and we're using a 10-bit system now instead of the old 8-bit Sony systems that would just fall apart whenever you tried to use anything, in my opinion, other than Cine 4. I also just wanna make a comment that exposing an image does not have to be as technical as people make it. Now, it is a technical thing a lot of the time. You don't wanna come back with terrible footage, but it's also an artistic thing. You might wanna underexpose, overexpose, or have not such a hot image for different reasons, and everybody's gonna expose, color grade, and do everything differently. So I think that there's just a little too much correctness with exposing. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but that's my personal opinion on the subject. I'm always gonna be filming in XAVCI 4K mode. Uh, this is just the best file and it's really easy to use surprisingly in Premiere. It's not bad if you have a decent computer. It's a lot better than the Canon R5 files I've heard. 
there's gonna be the file that I'm using no matter the situation, no matter the frame rate. It's just gonna provide the best quality. And at the end of the day, that's why I'm paying all this money for this camera is to, is to have the most quality available to me. So why not use it? Now, the best cards that I found for the price are the ProGrade V90 cards. I have two 128 gigabyte cards. I highly recommend these. The one thing is that with these cards, technically you're not supposed to be able to record 120 frames per second in the highest uh, file format, the XAVCI 4K format. But I found that it actually works. You might get a media uh, full or media not supported. I forget what it's exactly called. When the card gets more full, it stops working, but they're surprisingly fast enough to be able to record that footage. Now in a professional scenario where you need to be recording 120 frames per second all the time, I don't know what that would be. I would recommend getting the CF Express Type A cards. That's the biggest benefit to these cards other than the transfer speeds can be quicker to get onto your computer as well or onto your hard drive. I found that I have two of the, the ProGrade cards and they are all I really needed for the most part. But then when I bought the A7S Mark III, it came with the CF Express Type A, the 180 gigabyte I think it is card. <laughs> And it's awesome. Like it's a great card. It's just really expensive. That card is like 500 and something dollars Canadian. So I know a lot of people aren't gonna splurge for that. So the pro grade cards are the best option, especially if you're not shooting a lot of 120 frames per second. Like 64K is good enough for most people. And a lot of people are just gonna be shooting in 24 frames per second most of the time. We wanna be using the camera's native ISO. This camera has a native ISO of 640. And then it kind of has a dual base ISO at 12,800. I found that it's not really a dual base ISO, which Sony doesn't claim it is anyways. People just claim that themselves. It does clean up at 12,800, but it's not as good as the 640 base ISO. So my recommendation for that would be to just film in 640 as often as you can. And if you're in a low light scenario, 12,800 works fine in a pinch. It's good. I would just try and record in 640 as much. And that's a pretty high ISO at it. Now it's not on here, but I always have because I'm using it on the FX6. I always have a Tiffin Promus filter on the end of my camera. Now, I found with the variable ND that I have, it they don't work. It's like the same size and you get some of the weird vignetting. So I need to get new VNDs and I might just get missed VNDs because I always have a Tiffin Promus filter, a 1 8 on there because these cameras do have a bit of a digital look to them. The look is amazing, but you know, I'm going for that that vintage -y, filmy look, and I think the Promus filter does that the best for me. Now, one more thing that I found, and I need to do some more testing on this, I might make a separate video on this altogether, because when I bought the camera, I didn't really know about this mode, but one of the reasons I bought the camera originally was because it had IBIS. The FX6 does not have IBIS, and I wanted something that I could kind of run handheld sometimes with IBIS, as well as uh, throwing a gimbal. IBIS plus gimbal is like ultimate stabilization, but this came with active mode. Now, active mode is quite interesting. I think it's IBIS plus electronic stabilization, which seems to work incredibly. Like I could not believe how smooth the footage from this is. And then I'm almost positive that you can use Catalyst Browse on top of that with the gyro data to stabilize it even further. Now, I still have to do testing, so I don't wanna make that an overarching thing. I haven't had the time to do it. I used active mode on one shoot and it looked really good. I'm gonna overlay some clips of that, but I would like highly recommend trying out active mode. And the other thing is Catalyst Browse works great as well. I use Catalyst Browse quite often to get the gyro data out of this in the FX6. If a clip is a little too bumpy for my liking, there are problems with it. And I'm pretty sure it kind of deteriorates the quality of the film a bit. Plus it messes with the shutter speed, but it's there in a pinch and I would recommend uh, playing around with it if you have one of these. Thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you found some interest in the video, please subscribe and liking the video helps. If you enjoy the video, giving it a like is really awesome. Also comment down below if there's anything that I should elaborate more on. Throughout this video, I know sometimes I skip over things that people might be struggling with, so I can make individuals on that and letting me know really helps me get ideas for what videos to make. I really appreciate the support in watching this video and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Push it to the limit, I can't go no more. Red light, no way I'm coming back home. Long dirt road all on my own.